What you building? A house. That's cool. What you building, Ryan? I am doing the most tedious part of assembling a chicken tractor. And that's fastening the chicken wire to the field fencing, which is Look, very it's important. To Mommy keep saw the bird safe. You want you kind of want to have the chicken wire securely to fastened it. to the field I'm fencing. I'm going to crush it for good. Wait, wait, is that a wasp? Makes it pretty tedious, but it is necessary. Uh, what are you building, Liam? Uh, oh, you're hammering in the screw. Good job. Thank you. Good job, Liam. That's really good. I'm impressed. All right, getting this seed room cleaned up. So this right here is my potting station. I use this to mix my soil, and then I set my pots on here and fill them up. And then I transfer over to here to the grow lights, and I've got some heat pads. I've got one right here from last year that I'm just was sweeping off. Excuse my mess. This room gets very cluttered and used for storage and messes and pretty much not used all winter so I'm trying to get it a little bit cleaned up so that I can get started because I am way behind on starting seeds. So one of the things that I invested in last year was this plant light. It has a stand that it supports it. It has the stand that supports it and you can adjust the height of the string up and down and it's got one, no, two small high output grow lights. What I had used in previous years was just regular shop lights with regular shop light lamps, bulbs. So I knew I needed more of the plant bulbs and I bought them and never even switched them out. So I'm gonna actually, I have another shop light and bench set up over there and I'm actually gonna put one of the plant bulbs in this shop light and leave one of the regular bulbs and I'm gonna put one in the other because I only have two um and I just think that that'll be just enough because I've I mean I, I've grown seedlings with just the regular shop lights so I know it works it just doesn't work as good as the plant lights the plant lights were like way bigger so and way better like all the plants were leaning towards the plant light even though they had the shop light next to them so I'm gonna go ahead and switch out these bulbs and hopefully it works All right, now I just gotta go plug in the extension cord and plug it in and see if it's working.
It's on! It works! I think. Is that one on? Oh, there we go. Now it's on. Yay! Cool. I'm gonna change out the other bowl too. What are you doing? Are you playing outside? Yeah. With your brother, you're keeping a close eye on him while mama works, right? This in a tree right Liam, I hope you're not messing with those ants. They're just snowing since I went, they ran away. They ran away? Yeah. Because you guys were messing with them? No, I I, I just saw ants anywhere. I, I saw only one ant and it didn't bet me. It was the queen. A queen. Really? Yeah. How do you know it was the queen? Because it was big and giant. Oh. Uh -huh. You're a smart boy, you know that? We'll have to read about ants when we go in, huh? Yeah, we have to get a ant book. Mm-hmm. All right, this is the other side of the room where I have a workbench with a lamp set up. And I've got one side working with my grow light but the other side is not working and I thought it was last year but anyway I've got a new heating mat for starting the seeds on for this side and I've got the big one that I used last year for this side I start most of them here and then I end up us usually moving them over to that one so I don't always need a heat mat on that side but just in case I wanted to make sure I had that. I have some regular potting mix and compost. I have some of the cocoa peat and I have some organic seed starter. What I like to do is start in the smallest cell I can using the seed starter and just a small amount is needed so it goes further and then I pot up into this but I add some of the cocoa peat now in the past I've just used um, peat moss but it's not a sustainable resource so I'm trying to get away from that if you are at all squeamish or afraid of spiders you're going to want to skip forward through this. I was just moving some potting bags from last year out from underneath the table. And this huge black widow crawled out from underneath the bag. That's a double A battery next to it. Not a triple A. A double A battery. Look how huge it is. It's so pretty and so creepy and so scary all at the same time. And this is not safe to have around my kids and animals. So unfortunately I do have to dispatch it. Um, I'm usually okay and leave the spiders even though I have a little bit of arachnophobia. I respect them and know that they're good for everything in the environment. So I leave them and I respect them. But when it comes to Black Widows, in an area that my kids are going to be playing, I cannot take that risk. So he'll have to be dispatched to Ag because he's beautiful. So Ryan's been working on getting this done. And I just went up to the house to get an extension cord and I grabbed some hard boiled eggs from our backyard and some granola and some oranges. And we're having a barn lunch, a little picnic sharing lunch. It's fun, right Rowan? Yeah. All right, I just wanted to say, I've seen a lot of tutorials where people are talking about starting seeds and they either don't mention or completely don't do it. The fact that you have to moisten your soil before you start seeds. When you open a package of potting mix, what you get out 
is very dry and not going to be good to stick a seed into. So one of the big reasons why you have to wet that potting mix first is because it doesn't absorb the moisture the way it should when it's already packed into the cells. So if you put it into a bowl or a whatever, a bucket and mix it up with some water and get it hydrated first, then put it in your seed cells and then sow your seeds, it's gonna be much easier to maintain the proper level of moisture in that seed tray. Look at this super fancy nice door Ryan is making for a chicken tractor. So that's the one thing that's changed every chicken tractor we've built. <laughs> changed dramatically is the door. We just use what materials we have for the most part, so it changes each time. But he is almost done. He's got to finish the door and put chicken wire on this end and trim that extra wire on the top there. And that's it, right, Ryan? Um, perches. Perches. And do you have enough PVC for the slide, for the skid? Um, I don't think so. It's the wrong kind of PVC. So. Okay. So we have, usually we attach, we cut a PVC pipe in half and put it on here and run the whole length of the chicken tractor and that makes it easy to drag. All right, so I have my lights set up, I have my extension cords, I have my soil ready. All I need to do now is start planting. So, there's a few steps before I can get to that. I need to get my seeds together, which I've kind of sorted through already, and get my notebook for my garden notes so that I can write down which varieties I'm starting and in which tray that they're in. That helps me keep track. Even if I have labels in the tray, sometimes you lose those. So I write it in a notebook and that helps me. And that's it. So I, it's kind of late in the day today. So I think I might start that process in the morning or after milking or afternoon, whatever. Um, because it's already almost time to start making dinner and all that. So the day just gets away from you rather quickly around here.